trendy, catchy, flashy, sparkly, dazzlingly. Do I have your attention? You're listening to Lo-Fi poli We coming in, coming back. Little Five Poly Sock coming at you. Michael Pickering talking that talk. Getting to our famous question. What's going on in the world today? And today, we're doing our second part of an ongoing series we're going to call... Well, shit, I don't have a name yet. Right in. Give me some ideas. Come on, people. Help out the effort. A month ago, though, we looked at the media landscape of global news of 10 different Western media platforms to see just what news diversity looked like on that given day. We looked at the first 10 news stories of each platform, 10 different platforms, giving us 100 global news stories. But today, one month later, we're doing it all again. The same platforms, the same day of the week, the same time of day, one month later. And we'll see just how the international news coverage has shifted on these platforms, and then do a little compare and contrast to see what we found one month later. But let me repeat my exact methodology again, because poli is all about being able to replicate someone else's work. So this one's for you, lo-fi listeners. So I've queued up all ten sites to visit each of them at the exact same time and see what we get. And I do this on a computer so I can have all ten sites open at the same time. And I'm doing this on Sunday, March 13th at 10.40 a.m. NOLA time. And our first content analysis was done on Sunday, February 13th at 10.40 a.m. But I give you the exact time and date because, well, these sites can get updated at any moment. You know that. That's how the internet works. So by the time you listen to this on Monday or Tuesday or even next week, you can know exactly when we see these stories I'm talking about and where. And our 10 media platforms are, and the world or international section of each of these, so keep that in mind, the BBC, the Associated Press, a.k.a. AP, Reuters, NPR, Fox, CNN, Washington Post, New York Times, Google News, and Yahoo News. And a quick note about the inclusion of Google and Yahoo. I do this because they're both news aggregator websites, and a lot of people view their news from both of these sources. Plus, they get used all around the net. Thus, they are relevant media platforms, even if they don't create their own content. People still consume it on their platforms, and therefore, they're both still really influential. All right, let's go. Time to see what exactly we saw. We found that out of 100 global news stories across 10 media platforms, 17 overarching topics were talked about. 100 stories, 10 international sections, 17 themes talked about. Of those 17, 11 of them were only mentioned once. Of the remaining six that were covered more than once across platforms, two of them were only covered twice, the Iran nuclear deal talks and India accidentally firing a missile into Pakistan. Yeah, that really happened, people. And another story was mentioned three times, though I'll save what that was about for just a moment. One story was mentioned six times, Saudi Arabia's government having a mass execution this weekend. And the story that was talked about eight times out of 100, which is the second most talked about story across 10 media platforms and 100 stories, a five count to see if you can guess what number two on our list is. And five, four, three, two, one. And if you said COVID-19, you'd actually be wrong. I can't believe it either. We'll get back to that in a minute, though. And our number one. The story talked about most across all platforms, the Russia-Ukraine war, having 68 out of 100 stories across 10 media platforms as global news sections. 68% of our 100 stories were about this one topic. But now let's give this list a little perspective and compare it to our 100 global news stories that we covered a month ago. You see, in that list, our top two talked about news stories the war and COVID-19, combined for 53%. A month later, Russia and Ukraine alone topped that by an additional 15%, just by itself. Our top two stories today, Saudi Arabia and the war, combined for 74% of all 100 stories. 
Now, last month, Russia and Ukraine had 29 stories, and COVID had 24 stories. So our number one and our number two stories were only five stories apart as far as differences in the amount of news coverage they received. So they were pretty close. And the number three at that list was six stories. So they dominated international news headlines at the time, but the margin was far, far different than we see today. They were only five stories apart. Our number one and number two today, Russia and Ukraine in comparison to Saudi Arabia, there's a difference of 62 stories between these two events' coverage. The Russia-Ukraine story has more than doubled its coverage over the past month, from 29 stories to 68 stories. And the total number of topics that we see in our 100 stories covered has drastically shifted as well. Last month, we had 34 out of 100 were different topics. This month, we have 17 out of 100 different topics. So 17 stories out of 100 articles. The number of topics covered has decreased by 50%. Now let's talk about at least one elephant in the room. There were only three out of 100 global news stories about COVID-19. Three! Yes, you heard me right. It deserved a moment of silence. COVID-19 coverage has dropped drastically. And it went from being number two last month to being number four, from having 24 stories about it to having three stories about it today. And if we look at the top stories together this month compared to last month, our top five stories last month combined to have 69 total stories. Just one more than our top story this month alone. But our top four stories this month combined to account for 85 out of the 100 news stories we look at. 85% about four topics. Overall, there's at least two major takeaways from comparing our list of 100 global news stories one month apart. Number one, global news coverage The diversity of it has decreased by 50% in our lists. Number two, the top global news story dominating the headline has increased its exposure by over 50%. Meaning, taken together, we are seeing less stories talked about, and the conversation that is taking place is largely on one thing. Now, all of that being said, let me stress to all of you lo-fi listeners out there, just as we stressed a month ago with our list, these implications and statistics we have here only tell us about the platforms we looked at, on the days we looked at them, at the time that we looked at them, and on the type of devices that we looked at them. I cannot stress that enough. These two lists are not all-encompassing, and there are other platforms out there that people get their news from, for sure. There are other days of the week that people do it, using other kinds of devices and different times of the day. And all of those variables could potentially alter our findings, without a doubt. It's always important to know what we can say from looking at our data, but it's equally as important to know what we cannot say from looking at our data. Now, however, however, I think the trend we found holds true regardless of all of those variables. I consume international news all the time, seven days a week on multiple different platforms and even from sources that I don't use for this list. And the trends are all the same everywhere. Western media platforms are following these trends. But a last tidbit for you to head out with Whether you view these findings as good, bad, or not mattering at all is entirely up to you. You know, we're not here to tell you how to think. That's on you. We're just all about that perspective. You do you out there. Because you most certainly know. We do us right here. 
And that's a brief snapshot of what's going on in the world today. Check out lofipolysci.com. Give Friday's blog post a read. Always remember that Lofi Poli Sci is more than just me. It's the we that we be. Talk to you soon, Lofi listeners. Pickering, signing off. A little behind the scenes for all you listeners that stuck around. You know, I'm serious about all of you thinking about a name to call these lists. Because at this point, I'm thinking I may very well do this each and every month. So we need a name for it all. Write in. I'm curious your thoughts.